What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. How many of you recall the Burt Bacharach catchy hymn of the 60s? <laughs> Countless songs have been sung, poems written, movies filmed, books published, all based on that endless longing we humans have to be loved, to be cherished, to be valued by someone. And Jesus must have treasured love stories because the Gospels are full of them. The prodigal son, the good Samaritan, the woman caught in adultery, the cleansing of lepers, the curing of the lame and the blind, the washing of feet, raising the dead. And all tell the same tale. Each of us is loved freely, unconditionally, and forever. Today's gospel reaffirms that truth. Jesus says, as the Father loves me, that's how I love you. We're given a seat at the Last Supper table where Jesus is making his farewell address. So this must be important. And he tells us that you and I are loved in the same way and to the same extent that he is loved by God the Father. And how do we know that? In our second reading, John tells us God is love. That's God's name. God can't help but love us. And that's why he took the initiative to send his only son to be the source of our salvation. Through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we were reborn to new life, a total gift that we could never have earned, that we could never have deserved. Think about that. And Peter's a prime example of someone who was gratuitously forgiven. In our first reading, Peter, filled with the spirit of Pentecost, can't wait to tell everybody the good news. He visits the house of Cornelius, a devout and generous centurion, but a Gentile not a Jew, like Peter. And so, while Peter is preparing to catechize these potential converts, he discovers that the Spirit of God has already been in work in Cornelius and his entire household. And so, with joyful amazement, Peter says, what could stop us from baptizing these wonderful people in the name of Jesus? Like Peter, we also learn that the love of God has no boundaries, plays no favorites, shows no partiality, but desires to embrace all. Yet, even Pope Francis gets criticized at times for sounding too merciful, too compassionate, too inclusive, perhaps too much like Jesus. If it were up to you and me, would there be anyone that we would recommend to be excluded from God's love? In the Gospel, Jesus tells us what is required of us to remain in God's love. Keep my commandments as I have kept my Father's commandments. Love one another 
as I love you. Doing what the Father asked of him was not just a lifeline for Jesus, but also his greatest joy. And that's the kind of joy that Jesus desires for us. That's why he calls us friends, people who share his own heart's desire. And he offers us full support, knowing that love shown in particulars is not always easy. Like just taking time to listen, respecting another person, even though their opinion or belief might be different from our own. Giving someone the benefit of the doubt. Sharing another's grief. Withholding judgment or needless gossip. Offering patience. Forgiveness. A helping hand. A thank you. A smile. Jesus wasn't kidding when he said, Ask the Father for anything that you need in my name, and he will give it to you. Let us never hesitate to ask for what we need in order that we might continue to give what the world needs now. God bless you.